You know, for months, I've been waiting to see this EOS R5 and EOS R6, and I've been thinking this is really going to be a turning point for Canon. When I run my GoPro 8 in 4K, I get maybe 20 minutes or so, depending on the heat of the day, before it shuts down because of overheating. And I've seen this with other cameras and companies. For some reason, nobody can pass these plateaus of overheating that's going on. Now Canon has been renowned for never overheating and dual pixel autofocus and just great things that have always been known for. And it seemed like they were trying to hide this from people with the EOS R5 and EOS R6 on what's going on. Now I got a couple questions that probably most people are not talking about on YouTube. And I want to touch on those. Now this saying at 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 23, 23 degrees Celsius. That if I'm shooting at 8K 30 I'm getting 20 minutes. And then who knows how long to cool off. Set the camera down. Put a fan on it. Who knows. Now over here it says 4K 120 which is great for slow-mo. But only 15 minutes. Even in 4K it's it's not lasting very long this really is unacceptable i mean i'm running the eos r and yes i run the 4k and it crops in but it never overheats so we remove the crop we add 120 we add 60 and we add 30 and all of a sudden we got overheating unless it crops. So 4K 30 not limited by heat. EOS R is exactly this, isn't it? So this is the brand new camera that costs four grand out in the market, just under. Full sensor, 30 minutes. This is really unacceptable. I mean what is it, 3800 right, That's a lot of money. Unless all you guys out there watching my videos are millionaires or something. Anybody want to buy me one? But I mean, I'm not seeing a big difference here with the EOS R5 or the EOS R6 for that matter because we got 30 minutes li limit, 35 minutes, 40 minutes. I mean, the R6 is anytime you take video, you're going to be shut down if you go above 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Stick your camera in the freezer and cut a hole in the freezer and maybe you can continue shooting without it overheating. Now, they could have put a fan in it maybe, but then that would have made the camera bigger, so it wouldn't be a very small camera. But, so what's going on here? We've literally come to a point with these cameras that they can't seem to pass this line without overheating. Now here in Tennessee where I'm from, we're sitting around 92, 94 Fahrenheit. Now with the heat index 100 Fahrenheit, you don't want to be outside. I mean, you literally get dizzy, people are passing out. We've got uh, warnings because of people having hard times breathing. I mean, it's horrible. And it's going to be like this for a good month or maybe longer until something breaks. But this EOS R5, which is like $3,800, $4,000, 73 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to kick out. Can't run that camera in Tennessee. Not during the summer months. Maybe, maybe in the fall. You know, maybe in the fall, winter, and spring. Maybe that's what Canon is. Maybe Canon's, um, maybe, you know, this is your fall camera and this is your summer camera. I mean, this is ridiculous for what it costs and what the lenses cost. It's, it's almost like everybody wants to push everything to a limit, but they want to come up with crap like this. I'm not impressed with this, and I like taking video. So, now they're supposed to come up with animal focus, and um, 
I'd seen a post on Facebook where somebody had taken out the uh, SD card, set it to manual mode, and did some jumble jumble with the joystick on it, and literally turned on um, animal focus mode on the EOS R. But you can't record without the SD chip. So, can Canon do an update on the software in the EOS R to have animal tracking on it? You're damn right they can. They're not going to. They're supposed to release some form of upgrade for the EOS R, and that's supposed to be some minor bug fixes in that. Now, it would be amazing if they added the animal uh, focusing to it. But here we are with two brand new cameras coming out that completely overheat. Now, here's something else to think about, and this is what I wanted to get at. When you were heating chips and diodes and capacitors, and then we put in some form of program that says, well, if it reaches 73 Fahrenheit, shut the camera off until the chip cools down. Well, if you're constantly making that chip get hot, shut it down, make it get hot, shut it down, make it get hot, shut it down, well, you're going to have a malfunction. Sooner or later, it's going to break. You can't take transistors, capacitors, and all that and keep abusing them and overheating them and then shut it down for an hour and then bring it back and do it again. That's just something in the camera that's going to break. This is not acceptable at all. If you cannot do 8K, then don't do it. If you can't do 4K, then don't do it. I mean, this is like we're going to push the limits of this camera... You know, and Canon is renowned for leaving things out. This just, just seems like a sidewinder to where they're like, well, it's not our fault. You know, the sensors can't handle it, and we can't put a fan in because the camera's too small. Um, we've done the camera in a special alloy to try and cool the mechanisms inside. You see, and that's the problem with a lot of cameras. The more tighter and the more smaller you make them, the more heat is in there that cannot escape. And that, that's, a, that's a big issue. And like I said, my GoPro 8, when I record at 4K, uh, when it's hot, it'll only record for so long and then shut down. It even has issues when it comes to overheating. So one of the biggest barriers from the looks of it, when it comes to whether it's GoPros or any camera, they're all having issues with these heating issues when they start to get to these resolutions. And that's not good. Now, the US R5, everybody has signed up to buy this thing. And Canon actually said that they were surprised at how many people bought. They oversold. They were surprised how many people bought. People were so excited. I'm not excited. When I seen this, I was like, boy, am I ever glad I didn't pre-order I don't want my camera going down for an hour after I used it for 15 minutes recording something. And now I'm sitting there doing nothing with my thumbs up my ass. I mean, that, that's just bullshit. I mean, when I'm out enjoying my day and taking photos or video, uh, you know, I want my tool to be dependable. You know, that's like saying, here's your hammer, but, you know, after you swing it 50 times... The handle's going to break, so we're going to throw about 50 more handles in a, in a backpack for you. I mean, this is nuts. Why, why did they have to do this? I mean, why didn't they concentrate more on remove the 8K completely? And why didn't they look at, okay, we've got 4K 30 with a crop because we're doing it with the EOS R. So let's just concentrate on a 4K 60 and a 4K 120 and leave it at that. And see what we can see what we can do with that. And if we have to, I mean, open some fins up. I mean, put a fan in there, something. And and then the other thing is be upfront about it. And actually say, you know, when they were releasing this, this is what's going on. Now there's been a whole bunch of people that have fallen and bought these this pre release, because the camera's not even out yet, before they even knew this. 
And I was like, wow, this is pretty big to me. I'm actually glad I didn't go out and buy it. I didn't have the money, but if I did, I would be very disappointed if I seen this. I would have I would have ended up saying, I don't want the camera. Give me back my money. You know, I can't, can't go out and record for 35 minutes and then the camera goes down and then I'm, I'd be reaching over for my USR now. And say, well, the USR is dependable. At least this one's good. You know, Canon's really... I don't know. They're really messing up on whole new levels. And this is really not great for Canon. It makes you wonder what else Canon hasn't told anybody. And when these cameras come out, I mean... To spend $3,800 on a camera that you can't record, you know, it says full sensor width, 4K 30, not limited by heat. Uh, 4K 30 ASPC crop, not limited by heat. So basically the EOS R5 will do 4K 30 frames a second, no problem. But if you do a full sensor with high quality, it's going gonna, it's gonna to burn out in 30 minutes. Shouldn't even be an option. So basically what you're paying for is in the US R5 is a 4K30 full sensor. No crop or crop if you want. And how much more are you paying for that? And some animal tracking. I mean, I'm just not seeing it. With the EOS R... I recorded 4K with crop at 4K 30, but it doesn't overheat. And what's that sell for now? I mean, I think I paid two. I think people are selling them for 1500 But this EOS R5 is selling for, what, 3800 Almost double in money. And what, you have all these limitations? You might as well get the EOS R. And the only thing you're missing is the animal tracking. Just not seeing it. I'm really not. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I mean, this is like floored me when I seen this and I seen these time limits and, I, and the price of what these cameras cost. I was like, that's amazing that they're even releasing something like that. Makes you wonder who's in charge of Canon anymore. I'm not impressed. Anyhow, catch you guys on the next one.